So we're after putting the binding on our future quilt, and I've already started with this one. So I like to buy um, Duna covers at op shops, really good quality ones. And they may look very ugly, but when you cut them up into two and a half inch strips and you attach them to your quilt, they look they look great. You wouldn't know. So if you are going, if you do but happen to buy a Duna cover, then have a look at whether if it's got stripes, for example, make sure that you don't cut it with the stripes going lengthways because when you put it on the when you attach it to the quilt, you want your stripes to go this way, not that way. So be very mindful of that. And if it's got a join in it, well, make sure you keep the join in. You don't have to worry about joining bits and pieces and Normally, if you use a king size Duna cover, for example, you've got half uh, a strip left over for another one to do. So you cut your strips four times around the length of the fidget quilt. So in this case, it's um, four lots of 27, round about that, and add about three inches for joining, three or four inches for joining to be comfortable with it. So I've already started this one. So about two and a half inch strip I've folded. By the way, don't press because you've got a fair bit of different unevenness going around the fidget quilt and you don't, and so it takes a little bit more to fold over in some places than the other. So I've started here. I have left a about a, a six inch tail. I start on the side where the pocket is on the wrong side so i've gone all the way around doing mitered corners and i'm up to my last corner i'm about ready to do the join i haven't trimmed that off very well there so i better make sure i do that so you stitch up if you haven't done a mitered corner before you stitch up to a quarter of an inch from the end have a look if you don't just I've used my machine so much that all the buttons and the, the um, painting has come off all the buttons so just my, my um, brain memory tells me where we're up to quarter inch from the end take this out and you fold your binding strip up so that the raw edge is level with the quilt edge that you're going to come down to and then fold it back on itself so that the little folded edge lines up with where you've just come from back in the machine off we go down the side now we're looking at joining pretty soon so don't stitch down too far if you notice you need to be careful when you're coming down some of these to get the bits in some of the squares out of the way and sometimes if you've got uh, a length of beads for example they could get caught as well so you need to be mindful if your machine's not moving along you know that you've probably caught something notice that i'm using a uh, my large walking foot as well that gets over all the uneven bumps so i'm coming down here it's just about time that i joined this so the first part of joining is to open up the bottom one that you've got left there that you've already started with and fold down the top corner diagonally like that bring the one that you are coming along with down and you can see the bottom part is there this is where the piece is that you're coming down put a little nick about an eighth of an inch up you want it to just be a little bit shorter and then trim straight across this is much easier than getting a binding tool out, for example. So the next thing we do, I need to cut my thread there, is to join these two pieces together. So we open out this one, the top one coming down, on the flat right side up. This one that we've already got started stitching down the bottom here, right side down, and we're going to stitch diagonally. So just place one on top of the other like that. And we're going to sew from one corner here, to the corner down here where the bottom piece is underneath. So straight down here, you can easily eyeball it, take it out of the machine, it hasn't cut properly there, and 
and trim up your binding and by the way if you're not quite sure have a bit of a check before you trim it that you've done the right thing and then just finish so it's nice and sort of, as you can see just that little bit i've got it by cutting it that little bit shorter it means that it's fit, fitting nice and sat, snugly and is not too loopy or too loose so pull your bits out finish off so stitching a quarter of an inch from the edge and we're done there so now we need to stitch that the binding over to the front so just pull your binding out over to the front making sure you've covered up that stitching from your previous row and off we go now if you're a quilter and you're making fidget quilts you will find and you can see sometimes you get little um, bits of creases in there but look, don't worry about those as I said if you're a quilter you'll probably have hysterics that your binding isn't as even as it should be but because we've got so much unevenness in the fidget quilt look it's not going to matter so coming up to the corner to do the um, mitre pull the top part down like that and then back up and if you've done your mitering okay the first time around it should be okay one stitch into the corner so it's securing the piece you've just put up and then just keep going until you're finished off all the way around your fidget quilt i would never put a hand stitched binding on a fidget quilt because it can be easily um, picked uh, by somebody who is using it if you want to put some other um, activities in for example on the top then this is the time to do it after you've stitched your binding on then you know where the stitching is going to be make sure that it's undone like that for example if i want to put something down here i would stitch it on here backwards and forwards three or four times and then my binding will cover it up as you can see when we get back to the string of beads put the raw edges up Make sure that, that where you put your knot, lay that the edge of the um, braid along this way so that's very secure, out of the way and gives you, sometimes you can see you need to be really careful sewing over really thick pieces. So I'm just going to go and finish this off and that's it for now.